This is Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com and I'm with possibly the hottest free agent in wrestling right now, Killer Cross, who it seemed like he was being held hostage by Impact Wrestling for a long time. You were actually banned from wrestling on the AAA MSG show, from my understanding. Everyone wants to know what that whole issue was about, so maybe I could start with asking you that. I mean, uh, quite honestly, I'm completely and totally ready to just move on from all of that. Uh, for anyone who doesn't understand the creative frame of reference, I've been in, a, in an unpleasant holding pattern to play as politely as I can. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, just, I don't have anything else to say about it. I'm very happy where I'm at, very happy with the times and the circumstances. Um, just is what it is. From what I understand, you're wrestling for MLW in Philadelphia coming up in February. Are you signed to the company or is this an off shot? What type of deal is this? I'm coming in to do a show for them, uh, I believe uh, the 1st of February. And we'll see what happens. Further. Have you been approached at all by all elite wrestling? <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> Now, for those, we're based in Canada, of course. Uh, I'm not sure how much you've wrestled up in Canada. A lot. A lot? Okay. Yeah. For those in Great North Wrestling fans, you haven't been to Great North Wrestling yet. Uh, Want to tell us a little bit about some of the highlights of your career thus far? Uh, definitely having a career in Lucha Libre and AAA in Mexico, being able to work in front of 30 to 40,000 people on a regular basis. Lucha Libre being a cultural pastime for Mexico and uh, the run I've had there, I mean, not a lot of people know about it um, outside of the Latin American market, but I've been undefeated for almost four years in Lucha Libre, I never, never picked, never submitted, and uh, I don't think anyone in the history of Lucha Libre has ever had a run like that. It's been amazing, and uh, I have lots of highlights there. Um, I'm just taking in the whole experience, like every single time I get a chance to go out there. I'm not saying this because I think I'm supposed to say it. I mean, every time I get a, hit, a chance to go out there, I, I come alive. And uh, I always knew that this was what it was going to be for me. Like even as a kid, I tried a million other different things. I tried everything I possibly could to not become a professional wrestler because I knew that it was inevitable. Uh, every single blue collar job you could possibly think of. I was a bodyguard, executive protection, contract stuff. Like I dared it. I worked with kids. I was a mediator, corporate and family. I mean, I literally did everything. I was a director at Nightlife Entertainment, and uh, I mean, I literally did everything. And uh, here we are. And I, this is the best decision I ever made. What's the craziest thing you ever encountered as a bodyguard? I can't tell you that. Oh, you signed non-disclosure. <laughs> yeah. How do you even get into it, something like bodyguard? Uh, someone saw me do something and I was asked. Ah, I see. Yeah. So what are your goals in pro wrestling for the future? I know that CMLL, for instance, I believe you're with AAA, but they actually outdrew WWE for average holiday crowds over this past holiday. They had one 16,500 show, multiple shows over 10,000, so wrestling's hot in Mexico. I heard that actually, just, we were just talking about that earlier today. Um, I mean, my, my immediate goals would be to do the best job I possibly can at contributing to a program that people are watching. I have a completely different philosophy and perspective on the Pro Wrestling Collective. I'm just saying me personally, I'm not telling anyone how to observe it or think about it or anything, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it. I mean, we are, as an entirety, an industry that has an obligation and a responsibility to entertain people to the best of our abilities. And I don't really, in my mind, get involved with competing with other places or even competing with other people. I'm competitive, but I'm competitive with myself. And I'm competitive with what people want to see out of my presentation. I think that other people get twisted and they get jaded and poisoned thinking about things in other ways. This is his spot, that's her spot. The only spot that anybody has is the one that's given and you can get a lot more out of it than you think. I think just focusing on self-improvement I think is, is sort of just a lost art. Not even in pro wrestling, I think just in general in the common era. I think that too much posturing exists right now socially 
and I'm getting into a, a sociological fucking thing here, I'm sorry, but I'm answering honestly. I want to be a household name in pro wrestling, and I think the way to do that is to become the best version of myself, and that's a work in progress until I'm dead, and I'm looking forward to every step of it. Now, Violent Gentlemen's Jiu-Jitsu Club is your shirt. Is that an actual club, or is that a... Check it out. They have a website. It's a shameless plug. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just a fan. That's pretty cool. I watched your match tonight here in PCW Ultra versus Chris Masters. The referee didn't see it. You had a low blow. You were kind of screwed over in that match. It's over a thousand people out there. Pretty impressive for an independent show. What is your uh, opinion of your PCW Ultra experience thus far? Excellent. This is a great crew, great locker room, great production, great fans. I've been very well acquainted with the West Coast uh, professional wrestling audience for an extended period of time. Working all over the United States, especially in the West Coast, California, Arizona, Nevada, uh, everywhere, you name it. So it was nice to come out there. There's a lot of uh, Lucha Underground fans that are out there as well. It was nice to see them again, people that were at the live tapings at the underground. It's a great experience. Now, where can people follow you that are watching this if they're not already following you on social media? The first thing I'm going to tell you is I have a YouTube channel, Killer Cross channel. It's completely free. There's literally over 100 hours of footage on there, chronologically in a playlist documenting the beginning of my career to now. You can watch the character development, the presentation. I always knew that I was going to be on television doing this. And I'm not saying that arrogantly. This was, this was the goal that I had set. So everything I did from the very beginning was completely predicated on creating a character context and people could get into and watch. One day if I appear on television and people have no idea who I am, they can go back and watch this. So please, by all means, take advantage of this completely free Killer Cross channel on YouTube, KillerCross.com, and all my social media handles are very simple across the board. Real Killer Cross. That's it. Pro Wrestling Tees. Get some Killer Cross shirts too. Well, thanks a lot for talking to us. It's been an honor meeting you. Any final message for the fans up in Canada? Uh, hey, thank you very much for your support. I know there's a huge cross cult following. Everybody's got the red X's up in Canada. I appreciate it. I lived in Canada for 17 and a half years on and off. I absolutely love Canada. And uh, that country is very good to me. And I felt like it made me a better person and a more well-rounded person. The whole world is living in Canada. If you don't live in Canada, you don't know that. But if you do, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can find out everything about the world just living in that country. So nothing but great experiences. And um, yeah, thank you.